to introduce uh, our day four guest speaker on multidisciplinary integration, uh, Nadia Al Ghazali Gonzalez. The link's not showing, so it didn't go live. I'm not sure why, but you guys can tell me instead. Color. Color. Anyone else? Craft. Music. Creativity. Craft. Creativity. Movement. Thank you. Expression. Expression. Emotion. Emotion. Creativity. Creativity. Connection. Connection. All of the things that are important in our classrooms, right? So, arts integration. What is arts integration? Because doing art to do for the sake of art is one thing. Integrating, integrating it to our classrooms is another. And I know you all have experience with this, and I love that you all came here the week after school's out. <laughs> we got out last week too, so I'm just taking my deep breath right now. But learning through and with the arts. So when we're integrating arts into our classroom, we're using the arts for learning with learning. We are making connections with our curriculum, like you guys are all doing right now, which is a very exciting process, I think. And we collaborate, we engage, we engage with the material, we engage with the knowledge that we're gaining. And we have learning objectives, both in the art form and the academic content. So that is how we truly are gonna integrate art into our learning. So when we have disadvantaged students, this is where I truly believe that having an artistic approach in our teaching is gonna make a huge difference. 
Well, could we have multiple points of entry for accessing the curriculum? So there have been lots of studies. It is a little bit hard to find quantitative studies in arts integration, but there have been quite a few big ones done. Helene Robinson did one, and it was about arts integration with disadvantaged populations. So we're talking about economically disadvantaged, English language learners, students with disabilities. And in this huge study, they um, worked with teachers to integrate theater, music, visual arts, dance, and they had um, studied evidence-based practices and they used the data to really figure out, are these kids learning better with the arts? What is it showing us? When I think about my students with disabilities, the graduation rate in the United States is 63%, 63.1%, which means that 36, almost 37% of our students with disabilities are not actually graduating high school. That statistic scares me. It's, it's, are we giving up on them? Are they giving up what's happening in our school system? We're talking about 717, almost 18,000 individuals in the United States that are in special education. And when we talk about our special education population, we're not talking about moderate. We're not talking about severe, the kids that we see with cerebral palsy. The majority of the students in our special education system have learning disabilities, dyslexia, speech and language, other health impairments, that could be ADHD or other things that contribute to their um, access to the curriculum, or autism. These are the highest categories of students that we're talking about. So how many of us work with those students in our classrooms? We're talking about all of us who have that interaction on a daily basis. So how can we utilize the arts to create accessible learning environments for those students. Because their entry point for learning may not be the same as everyone else's. None of us are gonna learn in the same exact way. We're gonna look at three categories today. Academic and cognitive development, social and emotional development, and then behavior and student engagement. So, when this research study that I'm specifically talking about, there's been lots of them, we're looking at students who have these deficits in academics. Repetition is great, practice is great, but we need multiple entry points for learning. We need to have different options for them. The arts provides different modalities, right? Everything you guys have been doing here, creating those visuals, creating the books, hands-on experiences, playing with an imaginary ball in the air, right? All of those things that we're doing, concept-based learning, observing, analyzing, describing, modeling. Problem solving, we just did that with that silly activity we did, right? Somebody saw that the ball got dropped, they got up and got it. Very simple things. As a teacher, there's too much on our plate. How many of us feel like there's a lot on our plate? Yeah, our curriculum, the standards, there's just so much. So one of the, and you may have heard this already during your time here, but one of the ways I love to think about art in the classroom there's too much on my plate already, so I don't want to add to that. I don't want to pile stuff on top and think, oh, no, I have more to do. But art can be the plate on which you serve your curriculum, right? It's, it's part of the base. It's where we can start and say, okay, we need to learn all these things. How are we going to do it? Let's start here. A recent article you may have read about the effects of arts integration on memory and science content. They said that students who memorized and sang a song with lyrics that held science-based lessons remembered the content much longer with better detail than most classmates who tried to retain textbook content learned by rote without a song. Who would have thought it, right? Let's do a little song. Who knows this one? Miss Mary, Mac, 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 all dressed in with silver, all down her. How long has it been since you sang that, right? <laughs> but you're gonna remember it because you probably had a little hand thing that went with it. It's ingrained in us, right? Everything that we do that involves melody, movement, most of us hold on to that for almost ever, right? My grandfather, when he was, you know, basically, he had dementia. One of the only things he could do was sing. Like, he couldn't even form a sentence anymore, but he'd sit there and hold my child and sing a song to her. And I was like, that's in there. It's in there so deep. That's what we need to hold on to, and that's, those are the moments I want to create with my students. So I actually used to work with Youth in Arts, and we had some really amazing 
projects that were based in this idea of let's build that knowledge through um, through music. So we did a whole photosynthesis. Did anyone participate or get to be part of that? Photosynthesis. Um, recorded an album, did a huge play. I'm just going to play part of it. And this is a song about H2O, about water. Let's see. Oop, that's the wrong one. Let's see. Is this connected to sound? Yeah. So this is a song about water. It's got a whole bunch of science in it. It's fun to listen to, right? Um, we performed it on a large stage with students who came. And I have a funny story about it. So the songs talk all about all the science of photosynthesis. At the time, I had a three-year-old. So my daughter's going about her daily business in preschool, being a big three-year-old. She's talking about electrons and H2O and photosynthesis and all this stuff. And there was a parent volunteer there. And, and the teacher told me this later. She goes, yes, this parent goes up to the kid and goes, who taught you all that? She goes, my mom. She goes, your mom a scientist? She did a play. And the lady just walked away like, what? That doesn't even make sense, right? And she's going around rattling off all the scientific language. So when I work with science teachers, I hand them the music and they use it and their students are going around when they're doing their tests like singing the songs to themselves. And I'm like, this is amazing. I'm watching a kid go like this while they're writing and yes, it's stuck, the information is stuck. Let's see. Oh, now we're back. So that's one example. Another recent example is um, I work with middle schoolers. How many, is anyone here middle school? Yes, you feel my pain. Um, and I mostly work with sixth grade boys this year, so it was quite an interesting adventure. And I teach resource math. And as you can imagine, resource math with sixth grade boys with disabilities, you know, you gotta make it fun. If you don't make it fun, they don't wanna be there, right? So. We recently were working on order of operations, you know, just, gosh, and they're just like, this is not fun at all. I don't want to do this. I'm like, I get you, buddy. So what are we going to do? We're going to write a rap. And they're like, what? I'm like, you guys all like rap. Whenever we have free time, you want a freestyle rap? Let's do it. So we came up with this, and it was a really, I like it. It's fun, and it's somewhat appropriate, I believe, and the kids are very excited now. And when, again, when they were doing their quiz about order of operations, I see them singing their little rap to themselves, right? Let's see. Oops, let's get on to the next slide. Is this With all of these numbers, yeah, I gotta evaluate. So I use a pen, dash, yeah, you better appreciate it. I was parentheses for the most important thing. I'm so spicy, light, and spicy, spicy, hot wind. I can spawn it, I gotta raise up the roof. All that drip on me, yeah, I think I'm waterproof. With all this work I'm doing, my money won't supplies. Cause you already know I got my eyes on the prize. With all this cash, I'm going to need to divide. I push off all the dust and I push it to the side. Then I add it up like I add up all my cash. I pull up in the limo. Then you know I can get that. All of these numbers, yeah, I gotta evaluate. So I use pen and gas. Yeah, you better appreciate it. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> so we recorded that like two weeks ago. All of a sudden, you're like, yeah, this order of operations thing. And they don't have cash with their but you know, you can always dream. 
um, <laughs> sixth grade boys. Yeah, so, you know, that's, that's something I'm like, yes, my plate is full. Yes, there are so many things that I actually need to get done with the curriculum. And yeah, we took an extra, this guy is not cooperating with me. We took an extra, what? <laughs> an extra, it just walked. <laughs> We, we did take an extra class, but it was one class, and they loved it. All right, so I'm gonna pass through these because it's the shorter presentation. We're gonna get up and we're gonna do some fun stuff before I say goodbye, so let's all stand up. I'd love it if this room does not have a ton of room. Um, so we'll do it from where we are because I'm not gonna try to make everyone get up here in a circle like I normally would. All right, we're gonna clap, rap, rhythm, and rhyme, so follow me. first one together. So we've got, you guys are one long group. Let's do uh, two back there. You're the second two lines. Third two lines. Oh, I'm sorry. The first one we're doing together. So you guys are surrounding me um, from the north. Uh, I am the mountain. These two tables. And great forces moving, all you guys. Of how the planet, that's those two tables. And then us last ones we're going to do towards the sky and waves of change. So take a moment. Stand up with your group, look at your words, come up with some body expressions to go with it. Why don't we do the first one together first, right? So who can tell us about the mountain Tom Grand? Show me what you might want to do with your body. Yeah. Beautiful. I am the mountain, tall and grand. And like a sentinel, you want to have a second shape? Beautiful. And like a sentinel, I stand. All right, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to Talk to your group about your two lines, and then we're going to do the whole poem together. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. 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 Ye
Draw your beast, guys. Let's do this. Let's, let's embrace it. Let's talk about when I get angry, this is what happens. Let's draw a picture. Let's make a monster. That little monster lives in you, and it's okay. So one of the guys drew a monster with eight arms because when he gets upset, he throws stuff. And that's okay. That's what he does. How do we get past that, right? We talk about emotions. We act them out. We use theater. We use visual arts. This is the last thing I'm going to leave with you guys today. Those students that I'm talking about, they walk around with the burden on their backs on a daily basis of everyone thinks I'm horrible. Everyone thinks I'm stupid. Everyone thinks I'm a monster and I'm mean because they usually only see me when I'm upset, right? So we did this portraiture experiment. They, you know, basic portraiture. And then we said, when people see me, they think, this young man, this is a third grader. He wrote, fine. He also wrote, mean, ah, oh, I don't want to play with him. Shy, horrible, stupid, dumb. And then I said, if people really knew me, they would know. I'm a friend, I'm cool, I'm nice, I'm funny, I'm helpful, I'm smart, I'm a bro. But that processing is really important for kids to say, yes, people might think this about me, but that's not who I am, that's not what I am. So the social emotional aspect, I think is really sometimes often overlooked in our classrooms, but it's huge for these kids. It's especially in special education, but across the board. Kids who are coming from new immigrant families, kids who are coming from a house that doesn't have enough food for everyone, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I'm gonna leave you with. Um, I'm not gonna, we're out of time, but multiple means of representation, observing, analyzing, describing, improvising, problem solving, the child-centered environment, this all can happen through the arts. And kids will build confidence. Our learners become confident learners. They build connections to their school, to their community, to you as a teacher. And acceptance becomes part of what we do. Because in art, there are no mistakes, right? In art, if you're on stage, you mess up, you smile, and you keep going. Okay? Whatever you did in your drawing, it's not a mistake. You, you just keep going. And I think those are important lessons through art. So thank you for your time this morning. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your workshop today.